my purpose for having this was just to get together in a very small, personal, intimate way to take away the formality that exists in um, art exhibitions and especially in uh, gallery spaces and such platforms where it's almost like it's on a pedestal and, and people feel very afraid to ask uh, questions and to uh, be uh, fun. And uh, they get uh, a bit intimidated. So I felt like this was a kind of very safe space where everybody can bring their personal experiences to the journey. And uh, so I would uh, like to welcome to my curator, Pomi, who has been the driving force and uh, uh, a great person to work with. Maliha will be sharing her views, and just earlier she wrote something which I'll be sharing at the end of the recording. We'll post the text separately. And uh, so over to Pomi, and we will be talking about how this began. And believe it or not, this is over one and a half years old. I mean, on paper, technically it's four days old, but for us, the process was much longer. So Pomi, please shed light on our journey. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to our Zoom talk. Uh, it's been a pleasure to curate Cosmos, uh, Suraya Sikandar's homecoming show. She is showing in her city. I mean, Karachi is very much her city after six years. And a lot of people ask me why. So I'm just going to uh, talk about it right before. The reason she is showing uh, because she had a change of residence. She was here uh, about six years ago, and then she moved to Dubai and was showing art and doing galleries, and she loved the space she was in. So she was there, and then we'd been planning, like she said, a year ago to do this show, because it's always special when you are an established artist, wherever you may be, whichever part of the world, the homecoming show is great, because it not only helps you to connect with uh, your uh, roots. It also helps you to connect with your childhood friends, your family. And it's always a feeling of great pride to show your work in your own uh, country. You know, I, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's absolutely amazing. The feel just like, you know, when you do something, the first, uh, clap on the back or applause you get from your mom or your grandmother or your brother it is amazing. You know, the home influence sustains you. So Pakistan is home for Suraya. And uh, coming back to the show, I think a lot of her show is based to inspired from the mangroves. So we see it very evidently in her work. And uh, it's been a really nice journey. I and mean, it's been a year of ups and downs politically. So we were always finding the right place to do it or the right time to do it, trying to tippy toe around the city and figure out what's best. And because she had such a long association with Avari, we thought that this time, which is something unusual as well, because most of the shows in Karachi and I've been in the business for many years, uh, now almost 25 years, but most shows are gallery shows, or then they're at Frere Hall or Mohata Palace or at the museum. But uh, doing one at a hotel, it's a, it's been a wonderful experience. And it's really nice because you do have a lot of facility in a hotel. And also you open your show to uh, the general public and especially the international community who's visiting and staying at the hotel. So for me, the hotel experience has been really nice. And I think it's been good for Suraya as well. So I'll ask her to share some of her thoughts about doing it in a hotel versus doing it at a, at a gallery space. Thank you so much, Pami. That was, uh, that was really something. Living the experience, living it, it was, it was quite uh, beautiful and emotional and moving. <laughs> We have been planning this for longer than a year, and uh, it's something that so much emotions and time and vision went into the making that, you know, we don't realize, and then you look back at the journey and, and you see how much went into the making. And here we are finally, and it's it's only day four, and it feels like, you know, it feels like a lifetime in a very good way in terms of, you know, one's emotional um, investment into it. And uh, so it, Avari was, is a space that I have been collaborating with on and off um, for, for a few years now. And um, what I really like about this space is that you see people who visit Karachi and Lahore, 
but mainly Karachi, and they don't even necessarily go out. You know, you see people from embassies, consulates, people from from the country in meetings, and they experience art here because there's a art gallery set up, which was a collaboration they had with Unicorn earlier. And I had a few pieces here, and they sold, and sort of organically, um, the sort of demand and the buzz and the interest generated. And then with time I became an expat, I relocated to the UAE. I actually went there for a trip and I sort of stayed there. Um, later on, I was awarded the golden visa for outstanding talent in the arts. I got that from Abu Dhabi. And um, so I think I think Abu Dhabi and UAE just embraced me. And uh, speaking of being embraced by Abu Dhabi, we're joined by uh, Gida, who is from the Art Circle Award. I was shortlisted for this artist prize. And if I'm not mistaken, and if I'm not voting wrong, I think there were over 200 plus applications. So I'm quite honored. And the painting display that Utopia was part of our collection here. Uh, so UAE kind of became home, but I always thought about the home that I came from, which is obviously Pakistan. And in Pakistan, the city of Karachi. And uh, I used to hear all kinds of things about Karachi, about how unsafe it is, how unstable it is, and so on. And I felt that like that was one side of it, but that's not all of it. And I felt like it was a very unfair representation also. And um, so, because for me, Karachi is a city of mangroves. It's a city of Tadakan. It's a city of, you know, culture, history. It has its own roots and its own identity. And being a Karachiite, I wanted to show that. And I wanted to show those mangroves that I had seen, which became like a, a signature. They've become a signature for me because now when people see mangroves in my painting, they're like, oh, this is your style or this is what you're known for. And uh, as I developed the mangroves, calligraphy came in. And what's really interesting is that one of the collectors in this exhibition, whom you met for me, she has one of her earlier works, which is a calligraphy landscape, uh, which also got documented in the Qatar Museum, as well as in the Islamic Arts That's Journal. And uh, what's really interesting about this work was it started the calligraphy landscape. And calligraphy landscapes started from a mangrove that I saw in Karachi. And those mangroves led to calligraphy landscapes, which led to butterflies, which led to birds. So it's a non-stop evolving continuous process, like nature. One thing transforms to another, caterpillar turns into butterfly. Butterflies eventually, when they fall, turn into leaves. Those leaves turn into other things. And to depict that wonderful transitory uh, journey of life and to document it, celebrate it, but also to reflect on it, I think that's what I do. And because of my heightened use of color, I'm a tonal painter. I mix different tones and produce them. Because of that, I think for people, it's an element of fantasy, of um, a sort of utopia, an escape, a parallel world, an alternative reality. And I think that may be the reason behind its popularity. When I look at the effect my work has on people, how they stare at it, how they want to take it home, live with it, engage with it, I often wonder that Okay, on a human level, we understand why a painting or great literature connects with us. You know, why do we read uh, Romeo and Juliet? Or why do we read A Midsummer Night's Dream or Sense and Sensibility or Pride and Prejudice? On a human level, great literature, great art, it really touches us. And on a visual level, the colors um, make an impact. And I think all of that combined uh, led to Cosmos in a very dramatic and powerful way. And it all happened organically, and I'm so glad with the results. I love the <clears throat> ode to nature. You know, um, I think uh, nature is beautiful. And like I said, your, um, your art is very pleasing to the eye. It has a very, uh, I mean, it's drawing room art, so much to say that everybody wants it in their home. You know, and I... As an art director, I've seen that most of the events I do, and in fact, all of them, people want to be transported to uh, to a different world. They want absolutely a dream-like, fantasy-like setting out of this world. Even if I'm doing a charity event or if I'm doing an art show, I've seen this and I mean, I'm not trying to say the world is not nice, but maybe it's not too nice <laughs> these days with all the current war and instability. And I think in Karachi also over the last five years, people generally come to these art events or charity events 
just to be transported. And, you know, art has the ability to do that. Art can, once you step into the gallery, and as a curator, I feel that the minute you step into my show or my curated um, event, you're mine. <laughs> I want you to have that feeling. I want you to have that 3D uh, feeling of not just visually looking at it, but actually feeling it. That's why we recently have started adding these 3Ds, like I did the immersive show for you. I wanted to magnify your art uh, for people to be able to see the intricacies, even all over the world. You see it all the time, the Klimt show, the Monet show. They have these huge spaces in which they uh, project the art in a 3D way, just so that you know you can envelop the audience. It's all around you and you feel you're in this kind of magical place. So that uh, not only magnifies the art, also shows the workmanship of the artist. You know, you can, especially your art, which I think originates from the miniature style and the calligraphy landscape calligraphy, that there's a lot of detailing. So when you magnify that on a huge screen or a huge room, you can actually see the work. Mm -hmm. And obviously, art lovers obviously come up close to the painting and see that too. So I see more and more the feeling from people. And, you know, when you do art, you do any kind of uh, charity event or you create a, a, a space, I've seen that people like that. They like to be in this kind of world, you know. So your ode to nature and representing flora and fauna uh, is a great subject. It's a great subject because with nature, you can't go wrong. And all your forms are very organic. But I also, what I like is that you've used a lot of color, you know, mm -hmm. which is uh, some of the work is realistic color, of course, greens and all. But some, some is like, it says it has inspired from cosmos there's a lot of red and a purple and things that you may not naturally see in the sky but you can imagine it so it gives that uh you know that mystical feeling that i think you know that's what you wanted in cosmos so you know for me cosmos means all over the place like all around you like space and stuff like that i think uh, given the launch of the show and the collection we managed to achieve that you know mm -hmm. that feeling that people had and they were you know like immersed in the art and especially i was feeling that the people the youngsters they went into the immersive room and they didn't want to come out they just wanted yeah. to be there and have their drink there and just you know just just be there so that yeah. was a really good feeling you know because i think the job of a curator is to present the art in the most beautiful way and also in a to magnify you know to show the workmanship behind the, every painting so mm -hmm. um, what do you feel about that Suraya? Uh, in terms of um sort of sharing the work and and conveying my, my vision for me I, I thought the creation was spot on and, and you really understood as you say understood the assignment and you really understood what I was trying to say through my work and uh, the immersive room was an absolute genius idea and I'm so glad that you know you did that and I think uh, for I remember people going in people of all ages and taking photos videos but also with some of the slightly older people they didn't take photos and videos but they were in the moment they were in the now experiencing it which also is a testimony to its success and I think it worked beautifully with the paintings because as you mentioned my paintings are very detailed I started during COVID so how it began, my work before COVID and after COVID changed. And this people who are following the journey and the curators here, so on, would testify too. I wouldn't describe it as abstract, but it was in part described by early architects as abstract landscape, um, which for me is a slightly contentious term, but I, I that's a separate chapter altogether. But after COVID, there was not even the slightest element of association with abstraction um, because it became so specific, so direct, so literal. And so obviously a tree, uh, a bird, a butterfly. And I think that was simply a result of, um, I think it was because of COVID that I was spending so many hours indoors in my studio that the drawing was perfected. And then came this element of realism. But I do enjoy a lot of 
dream, fantasy, a surreal world of possibility. Um, because like you said, it is an escape, but it is my belief that great art, like great literature, um, like Shakespeare, like um, any of the great writers, Dickens, Hardy, and so on, although Hardy was a bit dark, um, but even great Renaissance painters, their work has the ability to transport you, to take you away to another dimension, another realm. And that's why it's classical, because it's relevant for all times. Um, so I think that's what I'm trying to say through my work, that it surpasses. For instance, this work, I show it in Pakistan. I show it in the UK. I show it in Singapore. I meet people in China who do not speak a word of English. Um, and yet they experience it. Uh, they experience it, they feel it, they connect with it. They stand in front of it. I see them nodding and I really wish I could ask them what they think. Like, but you know, that, that is the beauty and that is the power of art. And, um, uh, I think, uh, that's where this exhibition was successful in that it transcended those barriers. You were talking about the feeling of you for and escape and stuff like that and that's yeah. so true I think more and more people and I think it emanates from the fact uh, because of the troubled times also I feel you know all over the world uh, the world is I, I don't want to sound like a pessimist because I do believe I'm an optimist that uh, they are troubled times so mm -hmm. I see that people uh, revert to, like you said, great art, literature, spaces, just to find that peace, just to find that moment of joy. And all of these kind of things provides that. Yeah. And you, you were right that the immersive, also uh, doing an immersive show at, at this point is really good because it's the digital world, right? So that's exactly what's happening all over the world. So, you know, uh, it, being in Pakistan, and I would like to say, I think this was the first immersive show in a solo show. I mean, there have been images done before uh, in different shows that I've done, Banale and stuff. But this was like for a solo show, this was uh, we pulled off an immersive show, yeah. which was really great because yeah. I also feel good about it because it is digital. And a lot of uh, people of the new generation, the youngsters relate a lot to that, you know, so um uh, talking more about that but coming back to the mangroves i wanted to ask you that mangroves have always uh, inspired you right and uh, you see them in your paintings and all just uh, tell me tell i think everybody more about that uh, that love the mangrove love <laughs> so, uh, so i've always um appreciated trees and observe them as well as um, in my own way, sort of the imagery of trees, especially bare trees in the autumn, just the bare trees without the leaves, without the flowers, that has sort of left an imprint on my psyche. And what's very interesting is I was always interested in art history. And so to connect that, when I discovered Asian art, especially Chinese and Japanese art and their ink drawings, their calligraphy reminded me of Arabic calligraphy, which reminded me of trees. There is a very direct relationship between calligraphy and trees, um, especially uh, these bare kind of silhouette trees. And now Karachi being a full mangrove city, that's really what it is. Especially if you go near those uh, small islands and by the beach and so on, you'll see these beautiful forms. And then growing up, I studied some art history and I studied Sadhikan. He studied, uh, I think the Gadani beach is exactly where he saw a cactus uh, I'm not inspired directly by cactus, but I understand why Sadhikan was because of that form. And then he used to say that his fingers make um, Allah. He used to show. He had very long, beautiful, very slim fingers. It looked like like mangroves to me, his fingers. And uh, so I studied his work, his um, writings in Urdu, his interviews. I looked at Karachi. I looked... It was a natural expression. You know, for instance, in Pakistan, we are all taught the Quran at home. We always have somebody who comes in and teaches us at school or at home level. And when I looked at it visually, the letter Alif, uh, Alif, Lam, and so on, Bismillah, there was a lot of drawing and lines and, and very stylized. Um, and it just felt like a very natural expression to me. And what's very interesting is that um, the painting, the Cosmos painting, which is actually called Sunrise Butterflies, but everybody calls it Cosmos because it's our cover piece. So the Cosmos painting, um, the person who bought it, she said she took a picture of it and she shared it with her husband. And he shared it. He looked at it himself, but he shared it with another family member and they saw the 
they felt like they saw calligraphy in there, like Allah, in the sun, in the light, in the middle. And I said, that's very interesting because I haven't put any calligraphy in there. They said, it's it's just happened. Mm. So I think there's something maybe spiritual at work. Who knows? Uh, who knows? You know, I think we artists are just vehicles for larger being, for a larger, you know, message to be conveyed to the public uh, through us, through great literature, through great writing, through great books, through great paintings. It's a timeless message from the beginning and end. I have to say that artists think they're creating and they're the inventor, but I feel like there is something larger at work that is beyond them. And uh, that is for the people to determine what is going on. But there is definitely a very strong spiritual driving force behind art making. Yes, definitely. And uh, yeah, you're right that the the kind of shapes of the uh, the mangroves does go with the cal calligraphy uh, kind of strokes as well. You know, the long winding and alif meme, you know, the, you're very right about that. So that's interesting, yeah. And obviously nature is something that everybody can relate to. All the great masters also, Monet and, you know, Chagall, they all had this, you know, love for nature and, you know, like uh, in olden times, in our parents' times, you know, floral portraits was the thing, you know, was in every drawing room, you had this beautiful image of flowers. flowers or, yeah. Or, or it, painted them, Edward Manet, all the famous old masters, they all painted. There was always one still life in their portfolio. Like if you see all the old masters, you will see like one portrait. Uh, definitely a few still lives, you'll see a landscape and then you see their particular style. But this is a journey that artists go through in their training or in their experimentation, even if it's an abstract painter. Um, mm -hmm. Even if it's a purely abstract painter, they, they would have somewhere along the line done a portrait or done a still life or something um, which led them to that journey. Mm -hmm. abstract is something. You are conveying something to not just purely abstract, even color is made of shapes. Yeah, so I just wanted to tell you folks that uh, I have known Suraya and her brilliant and versatile art for many, many years now. And as you know, Suraya has trained at some of the best art schools in the world. And uh, she's not only an award-winning artist, but she's also extremely generous to the core. And she has donated her wonderful art to TCF, to uh, Honor um, Art, which was an online show during COVID and her painting was among the first to be sold and uh, much acclaimed. And uh, the thing about Suraya that I found extremely uh, interesting was uh, that she has always dabbled in new techniques of art. Like I think she's the pioneer of calligraphic landscapes and, um, and even this uh, show Cosmos that she's done here. And of course, she's been to the Biennale the Beijing Biennale. She was chosen to represent her art there, which is a big feather in your cap, Suraya, especially because you are so very young. But, uh, you know, this, I think, has to do with your natural gift as well as your brilliant training. So uh, I hope you're an inspiration to all the young artists out there, young and the old can also learn from you. So I wouldn't at all classify you as an emerging artist. You've been a player for a long time in the field of art, and um, you have really set the bars so high, the standards so high by your uh, extremely innovative art and revolutionary art. And your current show was really mind-blowing. I was completely blown away uh, because you have been able to capture the resplendent mangroves in Karachi uh, to perfection. So, uh, you know, your round canvases are another uh, a new thing in art that we um, saw. And also those were like uh, the portholes into nature's glory. And they were surreal canvases of butterflies, fireflies, hummingbirds in all their glory. And uh, you could actually feel the movement. It was palpable. And you have a really sensitive brush and your strokes have captured the intricate beauty of nature, uh, transporting the viewers to another world. 
And I'm sure these pieces of art would add warmth and a vibrant touch to any space, be it a home or office. And of course, the unique thing also about your show in Karachi was the um, uh, the uh, the art, the uh, you know the uh, the what is it, the room that you had uh, with the immersive art. So I've seen the Van Gogh exhibition abroad, but um, for me was able to bring your art to life through this immersive room and wish you all the best, uh, lots of love and uh, safe journey back home. Thank you so much, Malia. That was, that was absolutely incredible. And what an honor for me to have you talk about my work. And you have always been involved with the arts from the start and seen great art. In fact, you have a great masterpiece right behind you. And uh, I'm a huge fan <laughs> of Flacco himself. And uh, it's an absolute honor. And thank you so much for your very generous words. And it means so much to me coming from you because you have seen the entire process over all these years. Uh, from the start, from our first collaboration for Citizens Foundation to, to date now. So you, you saw the journey unravel and sort of the, the subject matter change, the landscapes evolve, the mangroves turn into the butterflies, the butterfly turn into birds. So you, you were witness to the entire process. And so, so hearing this from you means so very much to me. Thank you so much. Thank you for including me in today's session. All mm -hmm. the best. Bye. In fact, in, when we were talking about our journey, I wanted to mention that one of the things that attracted me to your work when we first started talking was your kind of ode or love for nature, you know, and your own take on it. Because I, like I said, I've done and seen a lot of art shows and artists. Not everyone does nature, but your treatment of nature and the organic forms and the kind of uh, 3D effect they take. Because, you know, some of your paintings, actually, you have things coming out of them, you know. So it does have that 3D effect. And, uh, you know, like like she said, the butterflies and the fireflies. And, you know, it, it's like a you almost think there's a, a fairy is going to step out of there. <laughs> and the fairy being you. <laughs> so in the sense that the work is quite magical and that yeah. really attracted me to uh, curating the show because I have to say I do have a strong love for nature. And you know when, I mean, a lot of people say when, if you want to look at real art or God's art, look at nature, look at yeah. the stripes of a zebra, look mm -hmm. at the colors of a, you know, a flower, look at the crimson red or the, you know, uh, the buttercup pink, you know, those colors actually we take from nature and we obviously apply them, but they're really, really inspired, I mean, done by God, you know, and uh, nature is a great subject and Mashallah, you have handled it so well and in fact magnified it, you know, given it a mystical and a colorful and a kind of a very, uh, uh, what would I say, like a kind of a very magnificent kind of, uh, with a very magnificent aura. So it's, um, I have to say, nature is a great subject. Um, so Cosmos, when we started this journey, it was a traveling show. And the reason we chose to make it a traveling show is because it's my comeback show. And I think it's a little unfair to just have a comeback in one city. And I don't know if any of you know this, but Pomi and I were originally aiming for three cities. And she was <laughs> looking for me for some, but she's laughing. Because in, in the end, we were like, no, no, two is more than enough. Because Karachi kept us so busy, so occupied, even now. And we are sold out. What are we going to show? Exactly. <laughs> That's and another thing. People are taking the work with them because they're in different countries. So they asked us permission. So Monday, some of those deliveries are going. So by the time we go to Lahore, we'd be less. Some paintings would have gone. And then by the time we would have gone to Islamabad, I don't even know what we would show. Probably we would think sculptures, huh, for me, the the installation, the, the man calls me to <laughs> just and, lock and, people yeah. up in the immersive room. <laughs> yeah, so, so we couldn't do Islamabad this time this year, but I did in the back of my mind think that that is something that is due and that's something I would love to discuss with my curator and we plan for the future cosmos. So this is, for me, I feel like it's the start of something. Uh, like for me and myself, I've started something. 
And it's like a dialogue, you know, with all of your contributions, questions, opinions, we are contributing to this journey. And I want it to be continuous, not, ju not just be there for this entire month, but for it to be something that is a long-term conversation. And I want you to see Cosmos in the future, how it develops, how it shapes. Maybe it turns into a proper large installation where I get pieces of trees that I collected in different cities, bring them together, paint them, our immersive room, put our installation there, put larger paintings, put other subject matters, use grayscale, use gray paintings, and then put hints of colored butterflies. So there is so much I would like to say through my work that I feel like uh, we have started something and it's going to be ongoing. And uh, please look forward to the next part of Cosmos. Yes, Thank definitely, you. definitely. I think everybody is going to look forward to that. Thank you for Thank joining you. us. Thank you, pleasure. Thank you. Please take a few minutes to comment on uh, on art in Karachi, the mangroves. Uh, share your opinion. We just have a few minutes left. I wish you had joined us earlier. Uh, I've seen some of the glimpses of her works when we were in Dubai, we met and she had shown me some glimpses, which I loved. That was between the process. Yeah, but the red painting. Thought, yeah. yeah. But mm -hmm. the thought process and uh, the detail she gives to each and every uh, uh, of her work is really inspiring. And do you Especially remember the fresco for us at the Ibn Battuta Mall and we were talking about how like, you know, this like a very South Asian style fresco. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That, that, that really inspired like me. Uh, like yeah. people who think this collection said it's miniature, I said, actually, it's fresco. Uh, mm, like the, that yeah. would be the technical term, but... I think that was, a, uh, I think that was Moroccan uh, cluster, I think. Moroccan, yeah, yeah. 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 And what's really yeah. interesting is if you see like um our, our very Pakistani style, it's obviously it's South Asian, but it's also like Mughal. And Mughal stuff has multiple influences. So obviously Indian, Turkish. Indian, um, Turkish, Iranian. Yeah. Yeah, Turkish, Iranian. And then also I think, you know, maybe Azerbaijan also has very similar style. So yeah, because uh, their uh, Mughal roots were from, I think, Central Asia and Turkey. So, exactly. so that's why we have we have influence of all of these in our yeah. Pakistani art. So studying art history, on some level, subconsciously, you know, we imbibe these images because you know we grow up on Islamic arts; it's in our culture. Yeah. And I think I um, recontextualize and also sort of in a way um, reinterpreted these in a, in a new contemporary setting. Yeah, exactly. And also, if we go through the history of uh, frescoes, unfortunately, now it is a dying art in Pakistan, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Yeah. Very few are practicing. I have seen some of the graduates from NCA years back. Yeah. Who, are, so who did not have a fresco anymore. Only yeah, yeah, but they don't. fresco. Because, you know, yeah. for me, it's a commercial thing. It's like a miniature is very popular. The miniature mm, art yeah. is well internationally, but Fresco has still to uh, make that comeback. So I think that would be my dream to make Fresco come back in Pakistan. But if yeah. you read, hmm. started talking about a year ago, we were originally planning to do Fresco. Remember yeah. the yeah. And our station was Frere Hall, if you recall. Yeah, 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 yeah. Frere Hall went into renovation. And I told you about that because frescoes obviously uh, look amazing when they're large. And, you know, yeah. the kind of space Frere Hall has, uh, no other, you know, uh, gallery has that kind of space. So it's funny that, you know, it would be nice to actually do that, you know. But maybe for Cosmos too. For, for the next Cosmos next year. Yes, yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. That's what I was thinking. Cosmos 2 can be all about frescoes. Yeah, yeah. We have to do something to bring back the lost art of frescoes. It can't just become a dying thing that we read about in history books, you know? Like, it, it, yeah, needs, yeah. To, it needs to be revived, you know? Yeah, definitely, definitely. So thanks so much, yeah. Firaz, for, for sharing your perspective you. and really bringing, like, a kind of debate to the whole thing. And uh, yeah. it's so interesting to learn. 
And for me, thank you so much for taking time out. And everybody, thank you for taking, especially people from Karachi who are joining. Thank you because I know that um, internet's unstable and electricity is unstable due to the rains. And I hope you're joining from the safety and comfort of your homes. And for people in UAE, um, and, uh, sorry about the interruption. I will share the video with you. And thank you for everyone's support. Pomi, do you have any closing remarks for the show? Thank you, everyone, for joining in. And thank you for everyone in Karachi for supporting Cosmos. We had a wonderful exhibition and opening night. And we continue the show for the next couple of days. So if anybody is visiting or in Karachi, which means uh, Faraz as well, come see the show. Because seeing is day. believing. Yeah. Seeing is believing and really enjoying the art. And uh, thank exactly. you, everyone, for joining in thank and you. finding... And then we're you going know, to go on. Experience to work with, um, with Suraya and to kind of showcase her art. And uh, hopefully, uh, all the best for the next uh, Cosmos show. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great evening. Thank you. Great evening. Thank you. Good evening to everyone. Bye.